I look with them. No ladies, man, I know that, Johnny. I never got girls down to kids in show business either, you know? So one girl told me, come on over, there's nobody home. I went over, there was nobody home. <laughs> Welcome to the Howdy Boomy podcast. We're going to start doing things a little bit different here in the coming weeks. We're going to make it a two-way deal. It's going to be a little bit more professional, a little bit more in length. Not very long. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but uh, being as old as I am, it's going to take me a while to get used to it, but we're going to try to relate more from what we were doing as baby boomers to what's going on now. And now every day you wake up, you look at the news and you shake your head. I'm looking at what's going on in the college campuses, for starters, and the demonstrations, the anti-Israel, whatever goes on there has always happened because colleges have been maybe the birthplace of a lot of ideas. The first time that a youngster leaves his home and has a time to go out and think by himself, meet other people his age, it's a part of growing up. It's a part of where you're background for your future adult life where your beliefs are formed. So college is very important as far as the formation of your attitude and what you're going to do the rest of your life. And I was taking a look at what was happening on college campuses in my day, the 60s. Now, if you go to howdyboomy.com, you'll find wall art. And one of them is a poster that I have back here. And on this poster is a photograph of a bunch of college students stuffing a phone booth. Imagine that. They weren't protesting wars, although there was a war out there that Vietnam took stage hot and, hot and heavy with demonstrations later. But imagine if you did that now. I think they would cover it once as a lark, but that's what people were doing back in the 60s, to have fun, to do things on college, stuffing a phone booth. How many people can you put in a phone booth? And now, just the opposite. It's all very serious stuff. They don't have fun anymore. Nobody seems to have fun anymore. Everybody seems to be pissed. I think one of the earliest photographs I have on the poster I showed you was Harry Truman holding up the Chicago Tribune that declared Thomas Dewey the victor in the presidential race in 1952. That shows you even the press was deadly wrong back then. And now, every day, you wake up and you have the political uh, assassination, the assassination by writing of Donald Trump. Everything has been weaponized, especially by this White House, the Department of Justice. All these prosecutions of him are orchestrated through someone in Biden's White House, while Hunter Biden sits there and smiles at all of us. But think about that. You have a, the political assassination. Since it looks like Trump is going to be the nominee, they're really going to go after him. They're, they have to get rid of him because they're deathly afraid, because they realize the more and more Joe Biden opens up his mouth, the more and more people realize who's in charge here. So instead of focusing on what the administration did under Donald Trump, they're going to uh, invoke all of the assassination politically on his life, these endless lawsuits, because they want anything but Donald Trump to be on that ballot. So if they can't do it by the American public, they're going to do it by another way. When I voted in 1968, I voted for Hubert Humphrey. I'm an old Chicago Democrat. He was running against R Richard Nixon. In that election in 1968, 73 million votes were cast. Roughly 61 to 62 percent of all the eligible voting Americans cast their vote in that election. 
This past election, 2020, there were 145 million votes cast, a little over 62, 63 percent, which think about what's going on now. You can vote two months ahead of time, mail-in ballots. I mean, just all kinds of ways to vote. It was just not one day like there was in 1968. It was an ongoing process. And yet the percentage of people voting hasn't gone up that much. Plus, now you have the 18-year-olds eligible to vote, and that didn't happen until 1971. So you've got all these extra people eligible to vote, and the turnout is roughly the same, even though you can vote months ahead of time, by mail, by email, God knows, carrier pigeon. And what kind of fraud do you think is happening with that? I always remember Nancy Pelosi refusing to make Congress come into session for more benefits for COVID people. But as soon as they had a bill before Congress about enhancing the post office system, she rushed right in. Do you think the Democrats could use the post office to steal an election? Sort of makes you wonder, doesn't it? I remember we had the pet rock. The pet rock. People went out. Some guy had a great idea put a rock in a box. It was a clean rock. People bought it. I don't know how much it was, 8 bucks, 12 bucks, and they gave it as gifts. Instead of a dog, instead of a cat, instead of a goldfish, you had a pet rock. P.T. Barnum says there's one born every minute. And I can imagine there's a lot of things out there now that people are buying that make the pet rock look good. Watch the Howdy Boomy program, the Howdy Boomy show on YouTube. It's soon going to be on Spotify. We're going to have a two-way conversation. Go to HowdyBoomy.com to get the poster that I showed you along with others. Other wall art, great, great videos to show you. A bumper sticker that you can join the Great American Peanut Gallery. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. God bless America.